Production sound mixer, responsible for uh, dialogue recording, any ambient recording, um, any music playback or music recording, all relating to uh, set production. The easy answer, um, hire somebody who knows how to do it. Yeah, um, you can't just buy a piece of equipment and magically think that it's going to happen because it's a great piece of equipment. It has to do with the expertise of someone who has learned how to do it. Well, the way I work, and I guess um, I think you have to relate to the actual production sound editorially. So I'm thinking ahead in terms of how something may uh, cut together. But you know, mainly it's issues of overlapping um, or interference, background interference, like a truck goes by, a plane goes by, or something like that. But you have to think editorially in terms of uh, that overlap, because sometimes you have to let it go. Sometimes you know, there are ways around that these days. I think technology has allowed uh, for certain things to be more acceptable. And what I mean by that is, um, we have multi-track recorders now, so I can set up more microphones that don't necessarily relate to the dialogue aspects, but will relate to the background aspects. So I'll set up a separate microphone away from the set to record, maybe if we're in a high traffic plane area, uh, to record that so that it matches with the production track, um, dialogue track, and then they can actually utilize that possibly in post. But that's a, you know, editorial but that's what I mean by, you know, part of it is that, um, you know, you could set up a separate microphone, record it, and maybe utilize it that way, if you can live with the background. Well, I mean, I, our goal is to get, you know, the best tracks that we can. So if, if, if there is no overlapping, for example, but the actors are spread too far apart, we may set up two microphones, one for each actor. And we can record them se separate tracks. Even though I may mix it to one track, they still have the option to relate back to individual tracks. Um, I don't, you know, the, the main goal I think is to use boom mics when we can, and not necessarily rely on wireless all the time. Uh, wireless is a tool, but not the main. Shouldn't be considered the main mic, although it is in reality shows these days, and potentially documentary. You know, depending on the type of documentary that you're doing. But even then, I think in documentary, using a boom mic lends a, a sense of reality. You know, it depends on the documentary, of course. But um, but wireless is a tool. It's a viable tool, uh, but it's not. I think the focus. It shouldn't be the focus. The boom is the main focus, and the wireless mics are a tool. If somebody's in, coming in from a distance and walking up to actors, you may want to have the wire on them to, bring, to maintain the presence of them till they get up to the boom mic and then maybe switch over. Um, this just, it's an experiential thing, um, you know, uh, but, but that would be one way of use, utilizing that. Uh, wide shots, if you want to cover that dialogue, you might have to do it with a wire. Um, if the ambience is too noisy, loud street ambience, Manhattan, um, we'll wire anyway just because to, to bring the presence of the voice out relative to the background. Uh, but again, our main focus is, is the boom. And if we can get in even on a city street with a boom, uh, we'll do it. We may still have the wire on a separate track, but I'll listen to the boom and I'll try to monitor both. Um, the, the, I think an obstacle these days, uh, people rely on, on uh, multi-track too much. Um, we're kind of forced into it in a certain way, but I think that that reliance takes you away from be really being able to monitor things. Because we'll wire them, then we're going to listen to the booms, but the boom's going to be the main focus, but I'm not sure if the wires are good because I'm monitoring the boom. How do I listen to really both? So um, that, that might be an obstacle these days, I think, for up-and-coming uh, mixers, um, that you really have to learn how to focus on, on something and make you know, really, um, reasonable judgments about which microphone's really your focus. Not just wire and put the boom up and put them all there and somehow rely on making it happen later. Um, I think you have to have some focus and thought, forethought about what your choices are. And that, that comes down to, you know, relating to directors who just, you know, if, if you're under the gun, but they want to run fast and they want you to wire, just wire them. You know, my argument is, it's like, why are you telling me how to do my job? You know, it's like, why don't you come to me and ask me, how, what do you think we should do? <laughs> um, of course, you know, with, with the experience that I have, I, I will just pretty much know what I have to do, you know. But for up and coming people, I think uh, 
you know, you got to stick to your guns a little bit. If you know, if you don't know, yeah, play it safe and wire and, and, and boom. What do you got to lose? You're on separate tracks. But again, you got to focus, you know, which are you focusing on? You know, even when you're mixing seven or eight wires, if you get up to that number, uh, the issue becomes, you know, which one is the bad wire if there's one in there? Then you've got to start poking around, trying to figure out which is, which is good, which is bad. You don't necessarily have time for that. Yeah. Yeah, um, yes, I mean, I have my, my way of doing it. You'll ask other mixers, they'll come up with some other thing. Um, but my main thing is I have my main four wireless mics on my left hand on a fader board, and then two uh, booms, potentially. So I can, you know, easily recognize which mic is which, but it'll, you know, be specifically spelled out on the sound report, which track is which, and if it's a consistent actor throughout a movie or something, they'll pr pretty much remain on that same track if I ever wire them or that. I mean, the boom tracks are the boom tracks and whoever I record on that is there, but you'll easily, easily find that. Just like in a studio where you set up a microphone for an instrument in a specific way or trying to get a, you know, um, certain quality of sound out of an instrument, the boom operator uh, manipulates the microphone to, to follow the actor. So if the actor's moving, they, they have to place that microphone where the actor is all the time. And that's his job. So um, his job is to figure out and work with the lighting, with the camera people for his frame line to keep it out of the shot, but also um, to deal with shadow, potential shadow problems and things like that. But his job is to put the microphone where the actor is going to be. There's some industry standards that you'll find on film sets, and, um, but generally it's a hypercardioid microphone. Um, better quality, the better, of course. Um, dealing with low budget, you're going to rely. I think you still need to hire a sound guy, and I think you need to rely on that. Can't just say, I'm going to buy a microphone, and then this is going to be, you know, it doesn't make sense. You need somebody who's experienced with, you need to learn the microphone. I've switched microphones over the years a few times, and it takes like a month to really kind of get used to something. So it's, uh, it's not one specific choice, but you want the highest quality microphone you can get, and probably a person who's experienced with it. Well, you can monitor it to a degree if you have a mixer and you're feeding the camera, you have a means of monitoring it on the meters and taking a return from the camera to actually hear that. Um, but you're generally uh, have an umbilical cord to it, and if you don't, you're not getting a return if you're sending a wireless feed to the camera. So you really don't know what you're getting. Um, I still suggest even to uh, people who want to go directly to camera, is still record a second uh, recorder so that the sound man can monitor it. Going to camera is not necessarily the best way. Even though if they have high quality, you know, reasonable preamps in a camera, I still think uh, having a second Separate recorder is the best way. It's not, they're designed as cameras. They're not, the, the audio is really secondary, right? So I, I really think it's, it's better to run a double system and, and do that. I know a lot of people just want to plug it into their computer and go on the low budget, um, but it's, it's not a very safe thing to do, I think. I think a lot of those productions end up running into audio problems.